everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer, and today I'm going to show you how to paint this adorable buffalo in little yellow flowers. Uh, you guys voted for this. It's part of Southwest Week. This is day two of Southwest Art Week, and three of the images this week were voted on by you. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He is going to be tracking me with cameras so you can see me mix paint on my palette. You can see every angle of the painting. He zooms in so you can see the brush action, and this is so that you can paint this at home. The whole purpose of this is that you can come and paint along, you can come to the lives and paint along, or later in the replay and paint along and paint with us at home. Are we mm -hmm. ready to buffalo? Oh my gosh, we are so ready to buffalo. I'm so ready to buffalo. Full candor, I am super needing a paint today. Mm -hmm. Like, I need it today. So You've been ready to paint. You've been like, I gotta paint. I'm ready to paint. This is my reference. You, of course, can find the references, the traceables, and all of that on theartsherpa.com for free on this page. We'll make sure that those are in the links below and available to you after the show. Yes. All right. I'm going to tape up my reference picture. So I have my color reference picture here. Oh, there you go. I, I find it helps to be able to look at what I'm painting. Mm -hmm. I can paint from my head, but I do a better job all the way around if I have something to look at when I'm painting. So I like to put these to the side. I'm going to loosely block in on my painting and paint so you can see it. But you'll notice I also did a black and white copy of that. And I like to often print out black and white so I can check my values. Because you can get away with some crazy shenanigans if your values are okay. <laughs> All right, so we have an 11 by 14 canvas board here. And I've divided the canvas into four so I can make sure that when I'm freehanding the buffalo on here that he's sort of within proportion. But listen. Drawing is just a skill that you can learn, and if you don't have it yet, it is perfectly acceptable to use the traceable. I'm coming over to the palette. All right. So over here, I have the colors. I have Indian yellow, I have cad yellow medium, I have yellow ochre, I have burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, a little phthalo green, a little phthalo blue, and I put the phthalo blue near the phthalo green just so I don't mix them up. Dogs eating purple. Uh, my surprise color today, I think, is going to be Cad Red Light. I've got Zinc White, Titanium White, and of course, this Milky Puddle at the center is Glazing Medium because when I asked you guys to vote, I also said why. Tell me why. Why him? And so the reasons you guys said why him, his cuteness. Mm -hmm. You're super excited about his cuteness and his flowers. Look at that little face. He's so cute. You were really excited about learning how to blend things, make them soft and look distant and mm -hmm. be out of focus. And you were interested in the fur and the eyes. So those are things I'm going to pay special attention to when I'm teaching today, explaining how you can get those effects. Yeah. But the first thing we need to do is put this little sucker on the canvas. So let's get him all blocked in. I'm going to get my sketching brush, which today is going to be a... What is it going to be today, Mr. Cooney? I don't know. We're going to do use this. I'm going to use a number four bright. This is a bristle bright, but that's just because I'm sketching in. And I'm going to sketch in with burnt umber today. Since he is a lot of burnt umber, that will vanish nicely into him. And I'm doing this so you can understand how he gets laid in if you're trying to learn to freehand. So in this is in the upper left quadrant. I'm going to add a little bit of his little buffalo hump. He's got lovely buffalo humps. I am thinking the song in my head right now. It's <laughs> happening. Right? I don't need to be super specific because what I'm trying to do is just say there's some buffalo shape here. Right? So I've mm. got this in the upper upper left quadrant. I've got a little horn here. Over here. His head, his big blocky head is here. We're going to come in a little bit for his eye. Right? We're going to start moving down into the lower left quadrant. I'm going to curve his little nose around here. So I just try to block things into shapes. Like if you look at his nose, it's what? Basically this little square that's right here. So that's sort of how I lay things in. And I realize I have lots of chances to move everything later on. So I just try to get basic shapes in. And I'm using my quadrants, right? If you see the traceable here. I'm using the quadrants to break things down into smaller bites. Right. What happens to us as artists is we take on too big a bite sometimes because we're trying to see the piece as a whole and we don't zoom in a little bit when we need to. Mm. All right. So we've got a little belly here. 
we're going to come over to the lower right quadrant. A little bit of this burnt. This just lets me know, hey, I got buffalo here. So I, I wanted to... Bringing up the cheek, yeah? I wanted to pass along that Sue and several other people here in the community really, really wanted to thank you for letting them pick and vote on their on their paint, on their their paint lessons because it's really been helpful to be able to sort of say, hey, this is what I, you know, what I really need next. And mm -hmm. so... Well, and also, guys, I would pick the wrong things. This is what I've learned. <laughs> in our back and forth voting process, the weird stuff I want to paint is not necessarily the exact stuff that you want to paint. So I really like this where, like... I find some images and I'm like, any one of these I would be cool with. And then you guys are like, this one. And not yet have I picked the one, like I said, the, the one I thought was going to win has not yet won. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's really good that we do this work together as a team. So I'm coming over here. I'm moving through the right quadrants. I'm making sure I'm paying attention to his little nose bridge, which comes, you know, a bit like this. And then it's got these interesting... These skulls have got to be so fascinating to look at, but then I would be sad because it would be a dull buffalo. I'm coming and making sure he's got a nice big head. The thing about buffaloes is they chunky. Give well, a little ear. Yeah, I mean, because you know, that when the buffalo turns around and looks at you and you know, you're a coyote, coyote has to go, well, maybe not. So whenever we're painting something that's facing us, right, sometimes that gets overwhelming because our brain is trying to tell us everything it knows about the buffalo from the nose back. Mm -hmm. Right. And we as artists have to stay focused on what we can see about the buffalo, not everything we intellectually understand about the buffalo. So what we can see about the buffalo is this nose shape here. Right. Yeah. That's what we can see about him and its relationship to everything else on his face. We can see about the buffalo his nice wide jaw. We can see his nice sad eyes. We can see his fur. But we can't see the space between the head and his body little buffalo bottom so whenever you're painting one of these little guys whenever you're painting something that's facing you coming at you try to just step back from the subject matter what you know about it and just record what you're seeing don't don't be like too worried and remember once acrylic paint is dry you can absolutely see how I'm sort of changing repositioning it never hurts to put your reference right next to it and just keep looking and working it out because as you do you're going to start to see stuff that you didn't see earlier yes now on top of that i've got some forward flowers we're going to be he's going to be in focus this fur is going to be highly detailed these flowers are going to be more detailed and then everything going back is going to be more muted and less detailed and that's how we're going to start creating that blended effect like mm, we like that you guys were like i'm so about that jam that sort of dusty southwest background yeah. And to get the sky, I'm going to want a much more muted sky, so I'm going to get ultramarine -y. Uh, Now, mm. I would do this sky, you asked me a lot about colors. What would I pick in colors? So for this muted sky, my choices would generally be, i probably do either um, a cerulean blue or this blue right here, the ultramarine blue. Cerulean and since we all have ultra. ultramarine, I have decided to use my ultramarine. This particular ultramarine does a very nice southwest sky because it's got a nice violet hue to it no so you can catch that and if you need to gray it you can do so so easily with a little touch of burnt umber which will take it into more of a stormy day so i'm trying to find a very very light mixture and i'm going to use some glazing medium on this and i'm going to do something else a little crazy here because i need the blend I'm going to take my mister. If you're using a squirt bottle that you squirt, it can do big particles to stand further back. So if you've got that like dollar little squirt bottle, stand about four feet back. <laughs> and if you've got this one, you can stand right here because it's going to just miss the canvas slightly. I'm going to miss this again because what we have to do here is work wet into wet. Now, my horizon line ends um right here about the buffalo's flanks right in the distance yep so i'm gonna want to make sure that i've got that marked in now on i've a got the canvas a smidge a smidge misted and this is going to help me just come in don't worry about keeping him sacred you're just going to be going around this we just want to get this in really well so we can blend between the little horizon line 
the sky, and the land. What's up, babe? Now, on a scale of one to three, how difficult is this? <sighs> um, so what I would say on a scale from one to three, if you're really, really new at painting, it's a tough two. If you're in 20, 30 of these types of paintings, it's an easy three. It just really depends on where you're at. Yeah. But it is achievable. Right? So I'm just adding white to my brush. Notice that? Because this guy needs to be super, super light. Just going back and forth. And I'm allowing it to be very streaky on the canvas. Sometimes we call that painterly. Painterly. Yeah, I'm not in any way trying to hide the media that I'm using. When you are blending, right, a lot of times what you're doing is you're hiding the media. But in this case, I am not going to hide the media. And what's great about this right here is even though I'm going to be blending between these two fields, I can easily get to this color again. So I can let this settle for a second and get to my second color. Now, if you were part of Naples Gate, <laughs> 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 your Naples yellow is actually really good for right here. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to mix it ourselves. So I'm going to pull out a little of my yellow ochre and my burnt umber together. Right? I'm neutralizing these two colors because I need to make a very distant color for the background. I think it needs to be a little more yellow than that. So I'm going to get some of my Indian yellow in here. I'm warming it a smidge. There we go, getting it. I'm just looking for this muted background color. When I have it, I'm going to get some of my glazing medium in it. And I'm going to come right here don't worry if you paint out some of your buffalo, you can put him back in. He, this could be even lighter, so I'm going to get more white on here. There we go. That's about the lightness that I'm wanting. So I just picked up more white to lighten it. Yep. This background is very, very light. It's distant, right? This painting is going to use a lot of white, my friends. If you give me just a moment, I'm going to make a quick adjustment over here on the okay. other camera. I'm going to put out some more white. Are we okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to adjust. The, there's a little glare picking up on this one. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to adjust it real quick. See if I can get some glare out of it. Yeah. All right. I'm picking up the white, just making sure all the rest of my color across here is as light as it needs to be. See how light that is? And if I need to, to create a nice horizon line, I can go right through my little buffalo sketch. <laughs> there we go. Where needed. I mean, we love him. He's important, but we're trying to make sure that our, our background feels super light, super far away. Right? Now, this sort of distant line back here Mm -hmm. It's an interesting little bit of kit. I'm going to wipe this off a lot. I'm going to get, this is one of my tricks. I'm going to get a bright that's dry yeah. and clean. This will be important. Dry and clean. Put this little guy here. You stay here for a moment. And I'm going to take just this particular bright. Another random bright. What yes, size this is, is a number four okay, bright. Number four. And I'm going to come and get a lot of white on my brush. Any number four, any small brush that you can get in here with. And I'm going to come between these two lines right here. See how I'm doing? This is still wet. I've got my clean brush if this isn't going to blend for me. All right. See how it's blending? Yeah. We have softened that line. Oh, oh. Where acrylic artists struggle is because our product dries very, very quickly. We struggle with our lines not softening. And so sometimes we don't get some of the effects that the oil painters get, and then we feel like frustrated. Who's going to get those soft, blendy edges? Because of these blending edges. I'm going to come right in there with the white and the brown, right? Just make sure that this is a soft, 
soft difference back into the blue and the white. I'm softening it, and I've got, there we go. See how it went wet into wet right here? Mm -hmm. This is what I would try to do. Now through here is an interesting bit of kit. I'm going to keep this brush right here ready. It's, it's just... little goal is if I'm struggling here, I can use this to blend, soften my edges, which I'm going to be doing a lot of. I like how it has to be right next to the canvas. It does, man, because you've got no time. <laughs> because it's, it's like, it's, it's, if it's in the jar next to this on the table, that's too far away. It has to be right there. It just, really does. Just ready to go. So I'm back to a smidge of my burnt umber and a, and a bit of my yellow ochre, right? This is where I'm at. Just trying to get this color. And I'm going to get some white. Getting my white, white, white because it needs to be light, light, light. And we're going to very quickly, and this is gonna be a whole little journey. Actually, hold on, it's two seconds. Four speed, I'm gonna show you something. I'm going to also mix up my green right now while I'm at it, to have it close by. So my green is going to be my ultramarine blue and my yellow ochre. And just my ultramarine blue and my yellow ochre. And I need a grip of it in the background. I might mix it into, yep, my zinc. I'm going to get some glazing medium on me so it doesn't go away too quickly. And I'll make another value here with my Indian yellow, but not too much. You can knock some of this back with your titanium. So see, I've got a couple things there yeah. ready to go. So now, let's do the hustle. I'm going to load my brush, pulling it out, right? And then come here. Oh, yeah, there's my distant wear little color background. And I'm going to pull this down through the buffalo, back and forth on the edges of my brush, resting this brush, picking up this brush. Let's get some of our color we just did. I have some distant shapes here of this color. Right, this is the ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre, more yellow ochre. Right, we're going to just, while everything is still wet, start blending that in. See that starting to blend in? Oh, yeah, the hustle, hustle, hustle. Blending it in. It's muted, distant, distant, distant. Right here, it's still wet, so I can get it. Now, Catherine was curious what your favorite color is. Uh, personally, in life, purple. Yeah. <laughs> I love purple, but I love all color. So, see, I'm coming down on the edge of my brush. I'm leaving sort of an open area. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to get some white onto my brush, into this brown. I'm going to Make sure I'm just putting some different, soft, distant values here. My issue is right there between this line and this line. So I'm going to get some of my cream color again and come right over just before. Dust some more of that in there. Well, look, what do I got to do? I got to blend this. Let's get some more of my cream color. You're focusing just on the right side of the buffalo? Just the right side of the okay. buffalo because my paint dries, right? Nor oil painters would focus like on this whole thing holistically. They'd stand back. They'd have a moment. Oh, and every once in a while you get, you get very like, whoosh, but see, I can zoom in here and keep the camera steady. Yeah, so, so what I'm doing is I'm light on the tip of my bristles. I'm dusting back and forth, and I'm adding barely noticeable muted values. Ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. Barely noticeable muted values to create far away little spaces of green. Right? So I'm just while the paint is all still wet. Now what can happen is that my paint can get too loaded with pigment. Right? Mm -hmm. And so then I can come here with this one and soften it if I need to. See how that all just softened out? Yeah. Now I'm noticing there's some warmth in some of this green, right? 
So I'm going to get my ultramarine over to, weirdly enough, my Indian yellow. You could use your cad yellow if you didn't have that. And just make sure there's some distant, soft spots. Too strong of a pigment, come back, soften it. Sometimes I will have literally a ton of these brushes to the side. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Because this is, honestly, this is a big deal in acrylic paint. When you can soften your edges, you can get away with just everything. A little of my yellow ochre and a lot of my white because I've got to come here and soften here. See? Yeah. Soften, soften, soften. You know, and just pay attention to what's happening there, like... There's a very light value that comes through here and implies that there's some stuff happening. It's going to be real fun when we do some soft blended flowers back here too. Even more white right here. Just keep it, you just really, really. And I'm going to need John to back up because now I'm going to need you back up from your canvas. And John's going to zoom out for me. And we're going to check our work and see how we're doing. Starting to be blended. Yeah, it is. It really is. Starting to push back. Look and see what about this is bugging you. I see a couple things that are bugging me, and I'm going to fix them right now. So I'm going to get my ultramarine and my Indian yellow, quite a lot of Indian yellow. Just press through, and maybe some of my zinc. Let's, I think what this is back here is these are some distant bushes and I lost that shape in my blend back and forth. So I've got to come back and imply that edge. That's an edge that matters in the composition. I would never bug you with it if it wasn't important. So see how I'm pulling down, I'm going dash, dash, dash. Yeah. And I'm painting, I'm following the edge line the edge line of this. Ah. Uh, the fuzzy. Uh-huh. Floor. A little dark. Background. Brown in the edge line somewhere. Get my glaze if I'm not sure. It is a West Texas shrubbery. So see I'm putting some brown there. Who now? Wipe off brush. Get a bunch of white. Get zinc too. Trust your zinc, man. Your zinc is a powerful tool. Mm. Now, what's so I'm just dusting this down. What's the difference between zinc and titanium here? So the titanium white has a very heavy pigment load. It's very opaque. And it has a strong tinting strength. Like super strong. So it can really overpower your color and make it much more challenging to mix. Mm. But... If you alternate, let's back up and see how we're doing. Okay, see, so we're getting there. Oh, yeah. Let's get the other side. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, this is a lot of work to just, <laughs> to just do that. But, yeah. So I'm going to pull this out. When I rested my brush, I forgot to rinse it out. Don't do that. So I'm going to pull this out, my burnt umber, and a little more of my yellow ochre. All right, trying to get that distant sand color and pull a lot of my white into here, right? Now, uh, let's see here. Uh, a lot of Lourdes, my white. Lords had a, had a really good question here. Oh, awesome. Okay, uh, so she says, uh, if you have really good color but needed a little bit more blended, would she be able to just use blending medium directly on the canvas? So, um, no. No. Glazing medium like what I have, yes. Blending mediums, no. And so that's why I said no. I don't know what you've currently got on your palette. If you have exactly what I have, you can. But if you have, say, a retarder or a blending medium, you're going to really need to read that bottle because chances are you can only mix 30% of it into paint and still have it dry. It's like whole purpose is like never drying. 
Ah. Uh. So it can really mess with you. So I'm adding some white to my little experience here, trying to blend down. All right. Blend, blend, blend. Blend, 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 blend. And you can see, I mean, like, my sketch is really only here kind of as a guideline, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just guiding me through what I've got going on. We're going to do an interesting thing down here. Right, and so back here, I still have a little of that green, so let's go back and find a little of it. Let's find a couple spots where we have some of that green, because we see that, you know, happening over here. So I've just grabbed this and a little of my zinc, because it was nearby, and I'm just, see how soft it is? So it's a very soft color mixture, but I just want to make sure that these objects exist far away. You know, I'm trying to make sure my value sets are good. Now, through here and down, we've got a couple things we've got to do. First yeah. thing we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves a deep value set coming down here. I'm going to pull my beige a little bit down, and then I'm going to come up with a very dark value. That's going to help set this space, right, where our focal plants are going to be. So first, let's make sure we're good and we've gone down a little bit. I'm going to have to put out some more white for sure. Right, so we want to just make sure that we've got this nice and well covered. Pulling that back and forth. I love that with acrylic you can be like la 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 la. And it's still painting my brush. If you guys ever wondered how this stuff happened. It's because she's got the brush on standby. Because I, when I'm painting on my own, I, have, I will have brushes and hair. Um, you know, I put a nice uh, hat on for you guys. But like John deals with like hair and brushes and a brush generally in my mouth. And he's always like, how's that brush taste? <laughs> is it good tasting? And I'm like, it's so good. <laughs> All right, let's create some deep values, right? Some dark, dark value for our plant. So I'm going to get a little of my brown and a little of my green. And I'm even going to get a little of my dog's purple. The still light people went, wait! Yep. And right here, through here, I'm going to take this mixture Right, kind of up into this and down a little bit right through here. Now it's interesting, it changes right through here, so I don't take it all the way across, but this is a great deep bush mixture. I'm mm -hmm. gonna come over here. Similar thing, brown, much more green, smidge of purple and make sure that I've got this here in the corner. This is going to really help me. And notice that I'm being very like loose and chunky. I'm looking inside. How do I know what colors to paint? If I'm trying to understand how to create something that's in focus, I need to make sure that it's under value. So if you look through the leaves, you look through the flowers, what's the darkest color you can see? If you have a computer editing program, you can use that sampling kit, come right on this pixel and pull it out. I think it would surprise you. Wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Is that interesting? I don't know if that's interesting yes, to anybody. Geez. But I get asked a lot, how do you know what color? How are you picking these colors? Because I'm looking through to my base. Gotcha. Looking through to my base. And so I know I've got to have some of this here. And then it's very interesting, I'm going to rinse. There is a deep value in the front, but it warms up. And so let's, to have an easy time, right, to have an easy, easy time through here, let's grab our little burnt sienna. I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre. Oh gosh, even some of my Indian yellow, it's so weird, I know. I'm going to gray it with a little of my Ultramarine blue. See, I'm just graying it out, but it's warm. No. Oh, this is fun. And then I'm going to come right here because I looked through the flowers at what's this darkest value that I'm seeing here. Now, as I'm coming up, it's interesting. It changes a bit. So I'm going to pull a little more of my yellow ochre into this and pull it up. A little bit. I'll have to flip the canvas back over in a second. 
so I can get my shapes worked out. So I'm pull it over in a second. Now this shape does an interesting thing. I'm going to get a little green on here, a little green on my brush, a little yellow ochre on my brush. Now you're using your gl your gloss medium here in the studio uh, just because you, uh, the studio is so hot, right? Because the studio is so hot, and honestly in a painting like this, it's a good tool to have around. It's going to help you keep your painting from over drying. Now will matte medium work as a substitute? No. Matte medium would be an extender. It's an extender. Right. And, and um, some people feel that it slows the drying time down. Um, the official thinking is from the paint companies is they have an exact percentage, mm -hmm. and you can read those specs and decide if that's if that's the amount of give that you need, right? Then you would be good. But if you needed more give, notice I went and got some ultramarine blue, loaded my brush. This is a number ten braid. I'm just working big and I'm working relaxed. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna lift this up here. This dark value. And that was another thing that, that keeps coming up is the all these seem to have like percentages that they seem to allow for you to, to do, you know, like yes. 10%, 20 You know, you, how do you know when you've used 30%? <laughs> you have to learn to eyeball it. And it's an important thing to do because honestly, the stuff will not dry. And, and you get kind of an experience of knowing, all right, I've hit my 30% mark. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you were to look at seven parts of your paint, right, and um, ten parts of your paint, three parts of them are mm -hmm. gel. So if you went, you know how you'll, it makes this will be like two parts blue and one part brown. So if it was ten parts paint, three parts of those could be the and medium. It would think, be a good way of looking at it. I think that most of them are technically by weight, but they are yeah. very similar yeah, by I volume. I actually have a friend that measures the stuff, so she's like, no, no, I totally measure. We're going to take him quite dark. Right here. Yeah. So I'm going to take a little of my um, dog's purple and interestingly enough, just a smidge of my cad red light. Just, it's a crazy thing to do, but we're going to do it. And we're going to come right here. We'll have another darker value, but this is just one up, and it's just going to create a little bit of color interest. We're going to be playing with this color interest around our buffalo. Mm. Even though we're going to be playing with the fur, we're going to do something quite special today. Mostly because I'm having a day. <laughs> now, sometimes I paint for myself yep. to feel better. John will tell you. I'm going to come right under the chin. I'm going to come right here with his purple, and then he's going to be up. I'm just going to make sure that this is there. And you can bring this into the flowers if you need to. See, I'm bringing it in. This is going to be another type of blending, the way we seam this stuff together. I oh, come yeah. back down into a mix. And that will help it seem, you know, I can even bring some down here that as I'm painting the flowers, this will make it seem like he's more substantially here. Super lovely thing to do. <laughs> the weirdness that is me. So I'm gonna keep coming up. Got my brush loaded with all these colors. You know, I've got a little brown here. I have so much to do with him that a lot of times it's like, hey, here's some paint. <laughs> Because there's a lot to say about you later. A little more brown. And that's the thing is like you can be very relaxed about your process. See, I'm just lightly dusting on this one. And see how I haven't changed paint but I changed value? Mm -hmm. Isn't that an interesting thing you can do? By how, how how much you push down. And yeah, I'm not releasing a lot of paint on the canvas, so I can create a stepped value here super easily, covering my canvas without actually having to worry. This is also going to help me have soft edges later with him. Rinse, rinse, rinse out my brush. What do I have back here? I have another little value of plants that are a little more distant, right? Some dusty road or something, maybe? Yes. So I've got a little of my ultramarine. I'm going to add a smidge of my thalo. Just a smidge, and maybe a little green, and a little yellow ochre. And I'm going to say to myself, do I need some 
brown. Oh, I do. And I'm looking for this. Oh, that's really nice. Seems super muted. And I'm going to come right here very lightly on the edge of this. This is a number four Cambridge. It's a bristle brush. And I'm going to be very light. Look at this. I'm just dusting the canvas. I'm just like, I'm not even pressing into the, the um, bristles. So this is the correct, um, I think, sort of awesome sauce way of using a dry brush to create a blend. Because it's really not sustainable to keep an acrylic painting wet into wet the entire time. So a lot of times you are really bouncing between glazing, wet into wet blending, and dry brushing to create anything. A little more of my brown onto the brush. You can always pull it up a value by adding the zinc. And that's the other thing. If you add the um, titanium white, man, it's going to pull it up a lot. You want to use that as like a surprise. So see, I'm just going to come right here and I'm just blending. Soft, 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 soft. Soft, soft, soft. See how soft that is? Oh, yeah. And that's what it is, just the tips of my bristles. And I see that I've got a little bit up here. Just coming up. Sort of an interesting little... Not totally in focus, but it's happening over here. Right, it's going on. And there's a bit of depth here. And then it just sort of opens up. And then, I love this, there's this weird, I'm gonna rinse out for a second, because there's this really cool yellow. And I'm gonna see if I can find this yellow. So I'm gonna take a little of my CAD. Oh, my paint is skinning. Could you push the can that up just a touch? Yeah, I'm gonna oh, take a perfect, small thanks. amount of my CAD and a little of my Indian yellow. And I'm gonna work these together. And I'm gonna get some zinc on them. And I'm gonna, uh, yep, I like it. All right, so I've got my zinc. And I'm going to come here and with the lightest touch I've ever used, I'm going to say there's such a distant flower here. Now, is this a controversial yellow? No, this is not the controversial yellow, <laughs> which we did eventually figure out. I'm going to wipe off my brush and I'm going to pick up some just zinc. All right. And I'm going to just make sure that that is just zinced a bit. And while I've got all this going on over here, I'm going to need more of my yellow, my controversial, not controversial yellow. I got this. And I, now if you get your titanium white, you can see how it lightens it. So I'm going to just come right here, just so lightly, adding a little bit of this distant yellow. See how that's just sort of a hint? Paying attention to the shapes. I think there's some just, whoop, do, do, do. See, kiss, 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 kiss. Mm -hmm. This is so hard. So what I'm not doing is putting a lot of weight through my shoulder into my canvas. Oh, yeah. A little more. Now, this is interesting because I feel like there's a smidge of green into this. So I'm going to bring a little of my ultramarine blue over. I'm going to wipe off my brush a lot. But it's there. So when I'm picking up my color, oh. right, it's going to start getting picked up into it. So it's yellow, but it's got a little green into it. So I'm going to just add a little bit to the tops of these flowers, super happily. These are less than focused flowers. What will happen as I pull objects, oh, that's looking, can we, we're backed up. So what will happen as I pull objects into focus, it will pick these less focused objects and push them further back, which mm -hmm. is just a fantastic experience. So a lot of what it is, is painting a hard edge. This here is a hard edge. This here is a soft edge. Hard edge, soft edge is the magic of your painting. You don't want any bits of soft, you don't want any hard edges where you don't need them. Melissa's 
she's she's they're, they're all commenting how they, they really like this painting and melissa was like is there anything you can't paint cars and, and that's, everybody <laughs> chimed in almost simultaneously <laughs> cars <laughs> i'll do it sometime you do i will paint you, what i suck at for you, you guys sometime and you'll be like you you can't you can't use the work on her vanishing point when it comes to wheels man they get all like not elliptical <laughs> and and like if you drove it the car would be like <laughs> it just makes me crazy <laughs> you'd think a square would be easier mm-hmm. i've yelled this at john you'd think a square and when i used to take commissions i don't anymore don't write when i used to take <laughs> commissions <laughs> One of the things that would happen, I'm going to get a little of my burnt umber into my burnt sienna. And I think I'm going to add some uh, phthalo to this mixture. So other than losing a lot of sleep, what happened when you were doing commissions? I would get asked to do all these cars. I don't know what was going on. And it was just like, and I was young and I kept getting commissions like, would to do things of which I had no affinity, and I didn't know to say no. Industrial equipment. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Just have to call my mother, help. <laughs> I hate this. And, you know, you're young, and you don't know. You don't know how to ha- to, to sit through and finish. Mm-hmm. So, see, I'm just being very light with this because I know I'm going to be. I'm going to. So, there's some different dimensions between our reference and our canvas and where I chose to resize in case you're wondering how to do this. So. This is in different dimensions, right? Like, because actually it would be cropped here oh, and yeah. like here. It would be cropped more internally. So what I do is I just go more bush. <laughs> you just, you keep moving it both sides. Okay. okay. That's fine. I just, I got you now. <laughs> it, what, it, what it is, I widen out on the outside because yeah. he's focal and I do this crosshair thing uh, where just, I make the cross. I make sure he's centered okay. And then I just add land and sky. You need more flowers and things. Yeah. There's always more flowers. As long as I have good shapes and stuff, I'm good for like always more flowers. So I'm going to say that there's a little flower coming here. Do, 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 do. And then it's got a little friend that comes. Do. Um, maybe I can show this as I'm doing it. Okay. I'm going to follow this line uh-huh. shape. But you're just going to scale it out. I'm just going to scale it out. And I'll, what might be interesting, I can take it all the way to him. And if I do, to make the plant seem more balanced and, and realistic, I might, see, so kind of came back up. Yeah. And maybe push a little out here. Because no one is going to check our work or our reference, except it's on YouTube. But mostly. <laughs> except all of you. <laughs> except all of you. I'm going to grab some of my glazing medium so I can just scrumble this out. So I just want to deepen this value. See how I'm doing here? We're just thinking about this. And then it can be just softer here. And oh, All right. That's what he has going on. He knows what he is. Mm-hmm. He knows who he is. He's the biggest little thing on the plains. And he's so into himself. He's like, I'm so handsome. No. I'm so fur and fabulous. Don't you love my furry fabulousness? Mm-hmm. So I know this is not a fast project, <laughs> no, but no, Southwest Art isn't by by its intrinsic nature, unless you're doing some very like abstracted. It's a study of our world and our color, yeah. you know, and of a place that maybe people don't necessarily think of as particularly colorful or special. What's super lovely about Southwest work is that you know you're sort of turning what people think they know on their ear. So burnt umber. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, maybe a little phthalo green. Sometimes I have to pull a color over to see it. You know what I mean? I do. I'm going to add a little Indian yellow to this and see if I can find it. Oh, I found it. What's wonderful is I don't need a ton of color. I just need some color. So here we go. just need some colors. I'm just uh, adding this. I still want it to maybe be a little more dusted. So you just get back into the yellow ochre. You need it more... Push back. So it just needs to be more green, but I got a little too green. I do need spots of greener, but just not everything. Everything isn't just one color. It's this whole mishmash of colors. Like So if I'm saying there's a deep value here, I have to create that deep value. I have to get some green and some brown. and Say so right here, 
under this run of flowers, it has to be deeper, right? You can do surprising things in a landscape. You can take your green and your purple, look at that, and create a deep value deep in your bushes. What's wrong? I have water. I would love coffee, but I, I think we're out of creamer. Gotta go store. So I'm just creating these shapes, these sort of defined shapes of deep value. All right. And I'm just working out. Maybe this can have, right under this ridge, I'm following it up. Add some here. Let's get a little of my yellow ochre. Haven't rinsed my brush. What a radical person I am. And I'm going to get a little of my ultramarine blue. You can definitely see the color if you pull it up. This is sort of a gray. And I'm going to dust this through here. Not everywhere, but it's going to have some dusting of that. I'm working my world. Look at that. That will really pop the yellow. So our greens are not the usual greens we do on the show. Our usual greens are so saturated and uh, so vibrant because we use the thalo thalothicin green. A lot of artists won't even use it. They're just... They're wishing creamer for you. I'm wishing creamer for myself, too. And, and it's when you're at the next resting place, you'll have to let me know because I have, I have the bubble machine loaded. They, we've, I'm we've, ready for some we've bubbles. Already... You can bubble me now, baby, while I'm scumbling this out. Yeah. Because they, uh, they, I know, blended is hard. I'm sippy sippy my water though, and you can back out so I oh. can see how I'm doing on my value set. There you go. Oh, and look, and oh, there's bubble music. But so yeah, we hit 300 already. Yeah, we've been 300. We've been hanging out and just like man, we had so many people here coming and checking out buffalo stuff, and they're very much wishing you for creamer. It's gonna be such a pretty buffalo. If you need a buffalo in your life, this mm -hmm. is your buffalo. Yeah. Oh, and this is a good time for me to do a little it pixelated out. So this is a good time for me to, to do a little. Let's see if I fix it. It says maybe. Wow, it went really wonkity. Did it? I'm going to put out my paint. Okay, there it goes back. Is it back? It's back. Hi guys, I'm putting my paint back out because it was skinning so bad it wasn't performing. Oh. Um, in summer in Houston, everything is just harder. I'll go back over where everything is because I'm just throwing it out now. Tidy plan. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be hair and hair and hair, and then, you know, it gets a little skinned, and then I'm like, I don't know what's happening. I probably won't put out my cad red and like any more purple until late well I might put out the purple because it's a good deepening color but yeah <laughs> yeah that's some thalo there's thalo there we go you know sometimes you gotta find your colors um it can be really hard for people to by eye tell the difference between ultramarine and thalo blue so it's a good idea if you have trouble to put a color between them you can even label there's mm. nothing wrong with labeling. Where? 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 It's okay. It's, it's it's acting up again. I'm gonna while it's doing while you're putting that last last one out, and then I'm gonna okay. try it one more time, and then it's just being a real pain. <laughs> I'm just trying to get that tube cleaned out. <laughs> we'll get this working one way. Or you another. will. Yep. I hope to so because it's a pretty painting. Yep. It just takes a moment. And now let's miss this thing. Man, it is hot, babe. Okay. Okay, that's go. There it goes. Are we back? It is back. So I'll, I'll go over the palette again real quick. This is the Indian yellow. This is the yellow ochre. This is cad yellow medium. This is burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, thalo green, thalo blue, dioxinium purple. I barely need any of this. You don't need to put out that much. Zinc white, titanium white. This is my acrylic gla glazing liquid gloss. It slows the drying time and lets me glaze. And of course, I might put out some cad red light, but not yet because I don't need it. Guess what brush I'm... Well, now I'm going to stay with my... I'm going to stay with my little dude, man. Yeah. Yeah? 
Yeah, so I'm going to sit there. This, there's some there's some more charm to the green, so I'm going to get my phthalo blue and my phthalo green together. Add a little of my burnt umber and see if in my, yep, yellow oxide. So I went phthalo green, phthalo blue, a little burnt umber into my yellow oxide. And I feel like I could lighten this up a value, and if I use the white, you can see that it just really does. Mm -hmm. And you can even yellow that if you need to. And then you've got this interesting little sagey color that you can be working here. You know, there's just a lot that's happening, and I just want to make sure this is there and we can see it. And I'm just using now the edge of my brush, and I'm still being very light. And you'll notice that I'm not, I'm, my edges are all pretty soft. Pretty soft edges that I've got, that I'm working here. I suspect I'll need to darken this value down here by his leg, because I added plant. I didn't need to let it be open or dark. So we'll just take this brushed to the left. Right? Then I'm just brushing some shape and directionality. So what's happening here is I'm talking a little bit about this plant in the sense, let's get some ultramarine blue and gray this out some. One other option to gray is to actually add purple to it. See how that instantly grays it? Mm -hmm. So I'm not adding black. I'll work complements against each other. But when you see it here, it's quite gray, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to just make sure that I'm making these loose, open brush strokes because that isn't where my focus is going to be. These little branches and things. I'll have to come back with some hard edges to create some forms and shapes that I am convinced about. Back in here, let's find this. This green is irking me. <laughs> I'm going to get phthalo blue and burnt umber. I didn't want, after what happened with the Naples yellow, I didn't want you guys to have to go buy another green. So we're working maybe a little harder than we normally would to find it, but we're going to find it. But we've got our nice, nice soft edges. Mm -hmm. And we're filling it all in, making sure it's got some depth. That's what we're trying to work on is does it have depth? So I'm coming down, I can add a little more purple into this and see I'm just making sure that this has deep shadow. And what will happen is when I put my hard edges, which will be strokes of more fluid defined paint, mm -hmm. let's darken this right here. We'll be glad we did later because it's implying that he's walking through a denser brush. Okay. Now I'm going to get a small, sharp brush, probably a bright with a good edge. You just find a bright with a very good edge. Here's one, number two bright with a very good edge. And I'm going to make a very yellowed gray. So I've got my purple, my burnt umber, and my green over here, and I'm adding a bunch of yellow to it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's still gray, but it's more yellow. And I'm going to do my titanium white. And the reason being is that it's going to really, really impact my color. I'm going to load my brush. And right here, on the edge, let's make some hard edges. If I need to improve the fluidity, I will. If I need to add a little more yellow to it, I will. But we're just improving the edges. See how this is hard mm -hmm. versus the soft? These are defined lines. And by talking about these specifically in the ways that we are, a little more yellow into my brush, 
it will start to create space in the plants. It pulls it forward, doesn't it? Oh yeah. It pulls the focus. Only putting them down here. Through this space, and I'll put a few over here. Of these more hard focused bits. They're very soft everywhere else, so I have to be super careful about how I talk about that. Now I can add my yellow, which is the super fun part. The yellow flowers we is like the yellow. whole payoff oh, yeah. of the, all that work. So I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow over to my Indian yellow. More Indian yellow than cad. You can always gray it with a smidge of purple because they're complements. A smidge. And if you need to, you can lighten a value with zinc. And let's talk about some of this stuff. So let's say there's some dashes. One of the tricks will be here, soft edges, because this group of flowers, until we get down into this, it, nothing's really in focus, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to leave the soft edges, and we need deep values. Yeah, our struggles will be yellow is transparent. Yes. <laughs> right? Um, the cheaper your paint, the more transparent your yellow is. Really any of your colors, but especially yellow. So I'm just trying to keep the soft edges and talk about these shapes. One of the things that I'm doing here is if you know, like if you're like, man, I know my yellow is a thing, guess what you can do? Hmm. You plan for it. You say, my yellow is a glaze. Oil artists will talk about how they love their glazes or their paint. Well, we acrylic artists have glazes too. We just don't lean into it. Look at that. So we, so we have that deep value of yellow. It looks so good. It's glazed there. You know, if you were a brand new painter, this would panic you because it wouldn't just suddenly be the flowers. Right? You would feel like everything's showing through and you would view and examine your painting from so up close, right? Yeah. But what you want to do, let's get some more zinc on there. Lighten this up a bit. Just pulling everywhere we have the yellow. We're going to say that there's some highlight, right? Yeah. Some highlight to this, but it's soft so far. Soft so far. We haven't really said, hey, be this. We haven't said, you be this cluster that's right here. Maybe you guys have to be right here. Because what you're going to do next is you're going to get your zinc. Not your zinc, your titanium white. Right here. A little of your CAD. You're going to look and look and look until you see a light color. And let's talk about this like we meant it. Do you see how the more opaque value helps them pop? Mm -hmm. But we're still being very soft in our brush stroke because these are further away. You're f I was going to say floofy. Well, besides that they're floofy, they're just not where our focal point is currently at, you know? Because they're floofy. Because they're floofy. <laughs> so I'm just talking about them like this. You know, I can take my zinc and just my Indian yellow and make a couple spots warm and important. Mm -hmm. Celebrate the color. This is a really stunning painting. It's really nice. 
like how it's all come together. Me too. Now, while I've got all this crazy yellow on my brush, I'm going to come get some purple. And I'm going to get some yellow oxide. Gray, gray, gray. See, I'm graying it out. Mm -hmm. Burnt umber. And maybe some zinc. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to very lightly dry brush. Not too much. See how light? Yeah. This little area here. This little section, my friends, we have accomplished. You can do a little dance. Be proud of yourself. Well, and, and you painted, look at those yellow flowers. They're so, so awesome. Anne just gave me a really interesting little bit of information. Huh. So she says uh, the, the, uh, the, the Chickasaw word for buffalo is Yanish. Or Choctaw is y y Yanush. So well, she knows both of them. Wow. Dude. I knew neither. So thank Yanyash you. and Yunyush. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. I love when you guys share that. I love it when That's you guys share that and chat with each other. And oh, wait. And there's another one. So Ooh. somebody else knows uh, ten, Tanaka. Ten, uh, ten, 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 tenka. Tentenka is a Lakota <laughs> word for buffalo. Boy, they're getting me with the pronunciation. They today. are, man, because like got... you were barely doing English at the beginning of the day. <laughs> 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 we got a sis. Alta marine oh. blue into my burnt umber. Hold on a second. Something froze here. Hmm? Hold on. Come on. I think I can fix it. I think it's going. All right. Boop, 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 boop. Let's see if it says. I think it says. Okay. All right. All right. So we're we're back from we're outer back? space. It. I think it. I think we're back from outer space. I, I mispronounced. Are we back from outer space? I mispronounced it, and then it went. Nope. Yep. You see, you did it. It's your fault. So I just did the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber in case you missed it. See, pulling that out. See how it's loaded on the brush? Yeah. So I'm going to come here. Yes, his top is definitely lighter than this, but I just got to come in here and start painting in some color, right? Some thought, some valuation mm -hmm. of him that I can see. He's wonderful. He's fluffy. It's okay if I let the scruffiness of this brush talk about some of those things. I'm sure we'll be talking about the horn in a second. And just so everybody knows, we you know on the on the backside here, it looks like the internet signals are doing just fine. Uh, there's just been a lot of you know there's a lot of storms, a lot of construction, a lot of stuff going on out there in the world. So if we uh, if we have a little bit of internet problems, that's that may just be part and parcel. But I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to keep things going here for the stream. You have confidence seems. in the stream? I, I do. I think that anything that we have is just going to be intermittent because we're we're doing uh, we've got such good signal, so to speak. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. So I'm just putting in his basic shape because we got to do that. Maybe I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre and come up here and add some of this. He's got layers, just like our flowers. And He's got the layers. And see now, now they're now they're coming in with all the pronunciations. <laughs> Tatunka. Tatunka. That's the the Sioux or Lakota for buffalo. Mm -hmm. Pull that in. If I if I I hope I said it right. <laughs> I <laughs> might need some new water soon. You can, guys might need some new water soon. We can do that. I'm gonna mix my burnt sienna and my burnt umber, and I'm gonna come over here and just make sure we're just two new jars of water would be awesome sauce. I'm just working out some values. A lot of times it's just. You know, he's brown. Oh. So that's like something that you've got to, you know, think about. Like his color, his shape, his stuff. It's a good idea if you can get to the background color again at this point, which is the yellow ochre and the burnt umber and the white. Remember, it was quite light. Okay. I'm not on screen? Oh, sorry. We're going to get through this quicker than you know. But he's, you know, he's a all piece. I'm just over here mixing the background color again. So if you need to mix the background color, if you need to get back to it again, right? So that maybe you could put his horns in in a more considered way. That's okay. You know, you know where they are. Maybe you got them in exactly where you wanted them. I kind of want to take them out and rethink them. 
So I'm going to just, see, ways that you blend in acrylic paint. Mix the color you mixed earlier pretty well. It's a good way of doing it. Um, this is... I feel, I feel, I feel, so it's very funny what's going on out in chat. Everyone's like, haven't you seen Dances with Wolves? Can't you pronounce this? Tatanka. Dude, first of all, let me explain something to you. John is not a Kevin Costner person. So, the mailman? No. The postman? No. no. Dances with Wolves? No. But you know, I think I've drug him through Waterworld a couple times. Kurt Russell? I mean, you can get me in big trouble in Little China. All so you want, but he just there. has not been a... A Kevin Costner person. And no, Kevin Costner, if you're painting with this, I'm so sorry. It's his bad taste. I like Kevin Costner. <laughs> I, I thought Water World was great. I mean, but I did not see that. I, I saw Dances with Wolves, but it was like, you know, on VHS. You are but the wind in my hair. Let me tell you, it's not the wind in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do, I do, you know, like, you know. So I'm just, you know, I'm just making sure that I like what I've got. And sometimes I've got to come back and think about that a bit, right? Yeah. So I'm going to take my purple and my burnt umber and a little of my ultramarine blue. I'm going to make, we talked about this a lot lately, some of the chromatic black, right? So there's a very deep value shade here. Mm -hmm. Coming up here. You know, I'm just looking at the shapes of his face, like, and making sure that what I'm, what I'm painting, mm -hmm. he's going to be so pretty, is exactly a little more ultramarine blue. And you're like, this buffalo's got blue. I don't understand what's happening. You guys are going to be so touched. So we're just coming along. Because we're doing this in the Southwest style. Look at that right there. Is that mm -hmm. not gorgeous in this world? So I'm just going to paint this dark value right here. And see how that pulls that little space forward? And I'm just pulling the ultramarine right over it. Right over it. Defining his belly by shadow. Mm -hmm. The space by shadow. A lot of it's going to get covered with flowers. So don't, don't stress on it too much. Don't be too stressed. Come here and get all my brown and my ultramarine. And let's talk about what's up here. So the undervalue of his hair. Like He's very punk rock. It's very punk rock. It's, <laughs> it's, I've got purple under here. I'm going to just rethink my horns in a second because I feel like these are important. So does the buffalo. He does. And I'm gonna, it can help sometimes to put your reference right by where you're working. Where your standby brush is normally? Yeah. There he goes. I like the purple underneath it. It actually makes that really nice living shadow that you talk about all the time. So the great Southwestern painters painted very colorful. <laughs> Many of them mm. just experimented with color and everything in color theory to capture the light and the flavor of the West, the American West, which was pretty awesome and special. Mm -hmm. Some people messed it up. Try it. You know, just some people came and messed it up. <laughs> just can't get company, good company nowadays, right? So I'm not worried about holding a hard, I'm not doing any real hard edges. I'm avoiding on him hard edges because there's very few places that he has. He has some hard edge here, and he's got a couple hard edges. But I'm just, his horns will be hard edges. He'll have hard edges in his eyes. Mm -hmm. And the nose will have some. But overall, I really don't want him to have a lot of hard edges. All right, so I'm going to definitely, definitely make sure that whatever else we've got going on, he feels furry. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm looking, everyone keeps asking like, how do I know what the undercolors of my fur are? How do I make those decisions? Make your decisions here. You can paint in almost any color if you pay attention to the value set. Right. And you, and you did that uh, on, on many of your paintings, including like the, the guy with pipe. Yeah. That was really cool. Yep. Just paying attention to the value set. You don't have to be 
completely married to what you see. And in fact, sometimes as an artist, it's, it's, we'll be like on the path and then we'll be like, except right here where I'm going to go completely off book. Have fun with me. I'm going to get some of my, my, uh, really nice burnt sienna. And I'm going to come around here. Definitely had to put his little eye back in. Mm -hmm. And still, just thinking about these value sets that I'm going to be painting on him. And I'll take him down one little section at a time. That's what I'll be doing. That's so cool. So like probably how on him, how I'll work is I'll work these back areas and then pull forward into his face. Where again, I'll resolve things more carefully. Because, you know, art. Because <laughs> art. <laughs> Halo blue, ultramarine blue. No. Little burnt umber. I'm going to get some uh, zinc. And, and, and you just use work his nose with this color right here. And you just use that grayscale printout to create the value set for the painting. Yes. What you're doing I'm just here. like, what is my value set? Mm -hmm. As I spend time with the painting, so there's a couple ways we create, right? And they're all pretty valid. They just have different processes, right? And one of the ways that we create is that we... Um, do a lot of studies, do a lot of consideration, um, really work it out a lot ahead of time, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then in one big tactical plan attack a painting. Um, and then there's the sort of paying attention to the value and form, but you're also discovering it as you're doing it, so you can be responsive to what you're seeing and feeling. Mm. This is a little more that. This is that. I see. This is that. You're like a, an agile buffalo standing in the <laughs> plains, looking Bird around. Birdsy and a toxy purple blue. Yes, I'm an agile buffalo. G you're gonna go Because that's what everyone wants to be is a buffalo. You can paint all the net. The <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> oh, my life. <laughs> so one thing that can always help you when you're doing anything Right, I, and this is abstractly or factually, if you want it to have some representational elements, is line objects that would be lined up up. So if my horns are lined up and my eyes are lined up, make sure that you have something that keeps you there. Oh. So I'm going to sit there and kind of resketch in my horns because I wasn't feeling them. I'm going to do it with purple. Because I'm feeling purple today. Why purple? Why I, all this purple in this painting? Well, he does look kind of... I mean, it... I don't know. But it does look kind of... It looks right. So, purple is the contrast of yellow. And I tend oh. to be... If you look at my collection of just regular artwork before I started this whole YouTube thing... Yeah. At girl, we're getting some contrasts. Mmm... And that's how it makes the dark, the, the yellow makes the purple look darker? The, the yellow and the purple um, create balance. In, in they, it's so interesting because when they're mixed together, they gray each other out. But sometimes next to each other, they pull each other into the forefront. Interesting. It's the emotional resonance of color theory. And you're right. There's probably some maths in there, math in there somewhere. Some maths. <laughs> some maths. Some maths and color. So that's why the buffalo is so surprised. He's like, you know, <laughs> there's math in there. <laughs> and I think I, you know, I is, even as a kid, I would make these sort of decisions. You know, I remember um, talking to my mom, and she's like, "Why are you doing that? It's very strange colors." <laughs> like, I don't know, mom. I feel it. Okay. Take me to a lot of watercolor classes and <laughs> see if we can fix it. <laughs> Art rebel. Mm -hmm. From now, the early days. But see how nice this is in this world? Look at the undervalue of this, even in this world. Now, we've got a, you got the traceable up on the website here. I, so yeah, we will right the after the show. Okay, so it's a link in the description below. Yeah. 
Link will be in the description below and below after the show. Oh, great. They're not the same. <laughs> oh, well. The horns are... are you, 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 well, you, you, actually, you. they're not the same here, so I just had a little moment. <laughs> <laughs> because his head's a little bit turned. It's a little tilted. It's a little tilted. That's okay. Let me look at it on the big screen. Weirdly, okay. Okay. <laughs> Weirdly, we're still all right. Weirdly, we're still all right. So what we have to do here, now that I've got that in, is I have to take a little of his side down more through his horn. See? Mm-hmm. Relational. I have to decide. What do we have to decide? I have to decide if this bugs me. I'm going to let this dry, and if it doesn't, I'm going to paint it out and put it back in. <laughs> it's like there's something happening over there, but I'm not sure what it is. It may is. be fine. It Sometimes what happens is like you're seeing something, and you don't realize that you're seeing it. You may have to adjust some horn. Right, but it may be what you're seeing in the photograph, because if you look, they're yep. differently positioned here as well. So it's just one of those things. And all the planners are like, see, 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 you didn't plan, and that's what happened to you. And I'm like, that, you know what, it doesn't matter, because I can fix my problems. So they, were, they, uh, <laughs> so they were asking, they say, in the painting, the horns ended up in the sky. And in the... Yeah, I put, yeah. Because I had to, uh, remember, these are different aspect oh, ratios, yeah. so I had to adjust the horizon lines and things. Oh, yeah, so the horizon line is up higher on the, mm -hmm. on the, on the, the bison as well. Yeah, I moved everything to make adjustments for the size of the painting. I see that. It's not like it's the right way of doing it. It's just a way of doing it. Please keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. We're not saying the right way. We're saying a way. So, pay way. A way, pay way. So I guess this is an American bison. Okay. And because and buffalo are, I guess it's, it's buffalo or, or, or it's not a buffalo because they, they don't, I guess, they don't have buffalo anymore. But this is, uh, they often call bison buffalo, if I'm right. Okay, this is starting to make me sad. Is that true? <laughs> I think so. That's so sad. Are you saying that the buffalo are gone and this is some other animal that we're all just pretending is a buffalo so we all don't have to feel bad? Okay, that just blew my mind so much I forgot to tell you what I did. I did. <laughs> I don't even know now. Burnt number, thalo blue, got some yellow ochre, and I'm over here in my zinc. What? That is so upsetting. A, they're different animals. Oh Amer no! But they're but they're similar. That's not no, no. That is the squirrels over there. <laughs> 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 Those are similar animals that seem different over there at the Grand Canyon. So so bison is also called a buffalo, but they're not all. The uh, they're, they're they're not all died out is what they've told me. Oh my god. <laughs> They're not extinct. I love my home. I love where I live, but it's not like somebody wouldn't have come up with the press release and like be like, "Don't tell these people we killed all the buffalo." <laughs> They're gonna be like all upset, and then the, there'd be protests, and then we have to think about it. So let's uh, let's just uh, be chillax about that. So see how I'm being very brushy with my strokes here. Yeah. So I guess I guess, I guess buffalo. I'm gonna erase this. There, there are there are lots of buffalo on other continents and other places, but in North America. I guess North America never had, but I, you know what? There's a whole lot more to know about buffalo than what I first thought. I'm erasing my horn because I don't like it. Yeah, I see that. And I'm just painting white over it first. Just, just taking well, it right out. Well, because you know everything is sort of transparent and and everything, and so by painting a little white over it first, it'll be easy to come back with this very easy background color. You know, I'm, I'm going to say, facts aside. You know, you Sherpa, you can just determine if this is a bison or a buffalo, or it could be. It's just, it's, you know. I'm just, I'm just so stressed about this information. I, you know. All I, right, I've got some blue here, and I'm going to come up here with this, and I'm just like right here down the center. Just, oh my goodness, it's just so. What? Let's get some more purple on here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Some purple right down here. There he goes. Oh my gosh. Now, now y'all have made me have well, to see, go off script is, entirely. Is, is it's like I'm reading how it goes. What it is, is, there's a lot of cool information about bison and buffalo. So, like, I guess <laughs> in North America, when they came over here, they called what we had a buffalo, which it is not. It's a bison. 
Of course we did. Because when they came from Europe, they were like, hey, look, it's a buffalo. But see, I can't confirm this because I'm just sort of reading from the chat as to what's going on. So remember, we're a painting channel <laughs> and not like a buffalo anthropology channel or whatever. I guess is it. Do, buffalo, do you do anthropology on buffaloes or is that only a human thing? I think you do zoology. Zoology. There we go. There's All right. So this is where we get comments from people like, if you guys could just stop chattering. I could be. <laughs> but see, we, but see, then we started to learn about the buffalo bison <laughs> what conundrum. What I'm doing is I've got my my burnt sienna, my Indian yellow, and a little bit of my zinc. And look, I'm just creating this sort of creamier. See these soft little brush strokes I'm making? Yes. See how it creates that feeling of fur. The feeling of fur is more important than the fur itself. Yes. That's not actually true, but, you know. <laughs> I'm going to come here with my, I'm going to get a little of my, just a smidge of my cad red into this mix. And wherever I'm using red, I'm going to definitely do my zinc because if I use my titanium white, it will always go pink on me. I'm going to get more into my Indian yellow. Yes, I am. I'm just processing through here. I'm going to process some of this up here, too. Look at this color. It's I really like it. And by process, you mean you're just sort of mixing it, adding it in? Yeah, there. I'm adding it in. I'm going to get some of my zinc white. So John knew I would kidnap y'all today because I had a <laughs> crazy morning. Well, what I didn't know is that there was so much buffalo like, information just like yeah and just we have, my zinc white through here i'm just you know what man guys we have a lot of kidnapped folks. you've been kidnapped just so you know that's what happened well there's a lot of folks who are very up on different on different native american languages and like cultural ideas and stuff and they're talking about a lot of it here in chat which is really kind of exciting so that's why i'm kind of quiet reading along no, I love it. I love I love that they are and I love that that's this this painting. This is going to be one of my faves. It is very nice. Ooh. Hmm. So, uh Cree Jokey. I'm going to get a little of my green and a little of my Indian yellow. Yes, I am and a little of my zinc white. What am I going to do? You adding green? Yep. Wow, just a little up on there. Uh-huh. Just a smidge. Right now, the thumbnail is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> thumbnail is a lie. So this is so so so. Cree was just making a question. She was like, "I wonder what a buffalo corn would look like." And I'm like, "Hmm, we're adding some Technicolor now." <laughs> so I'm back into my purple color I mixed earlier, and I'm coming down this back here. And if I need to, I'll grab some brown into it. But I just want that feeling of it in there. See how it's there? Super colorful. But I need to lighten this value a bit, so get your zinc. Get your zinc on there. Get your zinc on there. On there. Na, 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 na. I'm having a day. You are. Paint, paint, I am. Paint, paint, no, paint. I'm having a day. It looks like you're having fun. Um, Sherpa, <laughs> Sherpa's gone off script. <laughs> paint, 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 paint. I just a little stressed. And That's I okay. just need to work a couple of things out. And you guys are with me, right? Yes, they're very much with you. All right, so I'm gonna repair over here at okay. my horn. Did you get that little horn? Yeah, just repairing it. The many, many stages of repairing my bad purple plan. Wipe off my brush. Get a little more white. Repairing, repairing, blending it out. Into the background again. See, it's going away. Mm -hmm. I love making my mistakes go away. <laughs> there they go. You know. <laughs> do, do, do. <sighs> just, just pulling it back. You have been kidnapped. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to survive this painting day. <laughs> <laughs> you thought still life was a moment. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right. Just have to see if I feel like 
it's got to be symmetrical, but not perfectly symmetrical. So it gets to be a problem in my life. <laughs> and I got to look for brushes and ah. And I got to miss my palette a whole bunch because we've been here a really long time. Switching this to three hoot. <laughs> <laughs> a buffalo by any other name. Is a bison. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. Oh my gosh. Weird things that I'm just like, what is up with my homeland? Hey, could this be considered a still life? I guess if the if the, if the buffalo were holding very very no. still, we just like, but they don't move very much anyway. They're sort of like looking at you, like what you okay. doing? All right, you know what? This is what it is. And you're like, did you just change and put this? In? No, I did not put it in the exact same place. It's just similar. This is where it's going to be now. It's, it's emotionally in the right place now. <sighs> yeah, I guess. There we go. <laughs> Some of that painting is done. Though. I like this right here. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I'm very happy right here. <laughs> so I'm going to get a little of my burnt umber and I'm going to add a smidge of green to it. Because it's going to gray it a bit. You could also add thalo blue if you needed to. Gray it a bit. Deepen it. Everyone says you're doing awesome. I don't know. That's true. But I'm going to come through it. here and fluffy him up. He needs to fluffy up, man. Get your zincs. Get your zincs. Your zincs is your friend. And see how I'm just doing this little stroke? Mm -hmm. All right, just doing this little stroke outward here, and it comes into little flowers. And we like that. That's nice. And you can go real soft through here. And maybe there's a little soft bit of down right here. Come right here with a little more of the soft. I'm just trying to pay attention to what I think I have as a value. As a person, as a human being. Back into my purple. Yes, they like the horn now. They think that looks very much. They are in agreement with your horn placement. Oh, good, because he's it's there now. <laughs> I'm so glad because we ain't moving it again. <laughs> I swear there have been that in paintings where I'm like, no, I'm just not moving it again. Mm -mm. Things I learned about not doing, I'm bringing this dark value right here. And I'm just still coming with this dark bit of fur. See, I'm pulling this in in this little fur stroke. Yeah. little blue, a little purple, just pulling this in. Pulling it out. Softly touching right here along the side. I'm looking for these spaces. Into my cad red. Oh, I love that. Go more into that. That makes me super happy. Come here, you. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me so happy. Oh, there it is. There it is. There you are. So I kept adding CAD right into the value till it went into this sort of like incredible warm brown. This is like the jam, right? It's like the North American spectral bison. Well... I'm not at all saying that I'm like one like G. Harvey or any of the great Southwest painters, but I I'm like just saying <laughs> this is how you win at this art form. With using these the, all the all the colors for the values well, and the shades and the nostrils. Awesome yeah, because sauce when this is all done, the awesome sauce of this little dude will just It just jumps right up. It will just, yeah, it will just come right at you and you'll be just like, wait, what, what happened there? And you'll be like, well, you know, we, we so cool. All right. Back into my thalo. Let's come right here. And it's amazing how thalo blue then and ultramarine blue becomes a near block, isn't it? Mm-hmm. In this space. I feel super good about that. I do too. I like it. I'm worried this is a watch me paint. 
<laughs> no, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of people here who really are looking forward and, and are either in the process of doing this or are in, are interested in doing this this evening or tomorrow. Oh, Just excellent! Talking about that specifically. So let's start getting this right here. Maybe a little more blue into this mix, keeping the zinc. Right now, they're they're enjoying the different various names that they could be giving our bison alo. Or bison alo. <laughs> so I've just got this nice little fur bit over here. Smoothly right here. See, so going a little smoother right here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come back and lighten him up. Let's get into the yellow ochre. Maybe the Indian yellow. Get into the zinc. It's okay if the paint is slightly picked up another color underneath it. That never ever. Let's go. Just dusting, dusting, saying, You have a belly. Mm -hmm. Did you know you have a belly? And he's like, Yeah, I know, but just don't. You don't need to talk about that belly. He's like, Did you see these horns? I have horns too. So, one of my tricks when I become colorful, I'm going to take some of this up here. Very colorful with stuff, right? Let's get a little zinc, um, titanium white on this mixture. Is that I make sure that sometimes the colors visit other spots. That's how one gets playful. Mm. Don't you want to be playful? Yes. I don't want to be playful. This is very nice. Just enjoying painting him right now. It's been such a day. This get is some purple. This is all coming together. Let's get some purple. Let's add some red to that purple. So I've got, I haven't rinsed my brush. I'm adding my cad red to my purple. Makes the best color ever. Like ever. I'm coming right here. Oh, it makes me so happy. This color right here. Nah. Yes, I have kidnapped you. But see, his fur looks very furry. He's very furry. I didn't know. I'm showing you how to do fur. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Get a anthropomorphic and you could have a tauren. Oh, isn't he beautiful? He's very pretty. Take some of that color that you has because that's just such a good color. And look for a couple spots here that you could add it. You can add it right here. I think there's a couple places here where you would have highlights. See? Yeah. Add your highlights. Think about your deal. Get, I'm going to get some burnt there and I'm going to come in with my burnt. Now it's very light through here. Very, very, very light. Interestingly enough. I can again think about this belly, 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 and even a little bit on the back side. We'll do some cool stuff there. My brush was still dirty, <laughs> and that worked out for me. This is why a lot of artists keep their brush dirty. Dirty. What happened to me right there mm -hmm. is why a lot of artists will be like, "No, no, my brush needs to be dirty." So a little phthalo blue, a little purple. We're going to come here and just make sure that underneath here, and kind of around the muzzle shape, is a little deep valued. Well, he's going to look like a rainbow hot mess or so awesome as to be unbelievable. <laughs> One of those two things is happening between now and the end of the video. Do you want to find out? <laughs> I like when they, when they take on that pop art color. See, look at nice ease. But this is weirdly enough not even considered pop art. I know. It's just sort of... It's just how you can play with color. We'll call it YouTube art. No. This is, this is based on... Southwest art. It's true. It is. Those living in New Mexico are like, yep, yeah, multicolored buffalo have seen it. Bear, too. They've seen a lot of bear <laughs> in a lot of color, I'm sure. 
Technicolor Bear. I bet you. New Mexico art people weigh in who've seen New Mexico artists because where are you gonna where are you gonna break boundaries, right? When you're talking about you know certain subjects, how are you gonna do that? You're gonna just a little bit right here, right? Love it. So cad red, dox purple together. We're going to be up here. Let's work this space, right? I'm yeah. scruffling it around. See, I'm scruffling it around. I do. No. The scruffalo of the buffalo. Scruffalo of the buffalo. Kind of scruffling this around. Scruffling it around the horn. Maybe here. Let's keep scruffling. Don't back off your scruffle. You're never going to get out of here if you, if, you, if you give up on your scruffle. When these yellow flowers come in, <laughs> and end up... This is the kind of painting, like, after I do it on the YouTube show, then we have to deal, like, let's get some ultramarine blue on the brush. Um, we have to, like, really think about, like, family members being like, that's mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take a little small V in here. It's dark value. All right. You thought your buffalo was going to be brown. I'm take this up a little bit and square this at the bottom. And so I'm just looking at this space around the nose to make these decisions. Just so you know, um, a lot of people are like, oh, you practiced this before. John will verify for you. No, you guys vote on the picture, and then I show you guys how I translate a picture into a painting. Yes. Right? You're actually understanding and hearing my process as I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Do you love this value between these two? I do. I do, I do, I do. So I know that I've got from the horn. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Let's get some blue here. So he's this sort of interesting spot right there. That blue. This one also has sort of an interesting spot. Hey, Buffalo, how you doing? Hello. Hello. He says, what's up? What's up? I'm, I'm standing so in the Buffalo. Field, hanging Wait out by you. show these people, like, what happens when you he's like, I'm hanging add out. the highlights, they go freak out. They are. You know, with the fur is coming together so nicely, I like how they've done it. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. the coolest ever. <laughs> and then the nose and the eyes and the horns and it's going to be like, oh, he looks like, is he going to look like a dark mess to you? Because he's beautiful no. over here. Shh, look at that. See? Okay. It's So it, it, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a darker painting. So I'm, you know, it's, it's you're okay. You're, you're stuck in that struggle. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it, it does this. All right. So let's get our zinc white out. Right. And I've got, I have not rinsed my brush. It's a dirty, dirty. Right, I'm going between my cad red, my ultramarine, my thalo blue, and my docks, and my zinc. And I think I definitely want, let's go, let's go, let's go, a little more warm. Here we are. So let's start just right here. Lighter. See that? Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I press in with my brush and allow the paint to sort of mix. First rinse. First rinse of refusal. 
here we go, my phthalo, per my phthalo blue and my purple, and I might add a little ultramarine to that and still get back into my zinc, right? I'm just going to start adding bits of the fur highlights, and I press my brush in. Look. Oh yeah, it just makes that it'll just go. Pow. Yeah. It just jumps right up. It does. It does. Isn't that fun. That is amazing. It's a fun thing. You you probably don't think because look, it just does this to your brush. But if you follow the Art Sherpa method of reshaping your brush, no biggie. <laughs> 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 just, just me and a little bit of time with the brush spa. This brush feels so abused right now, but will eventually feel perfectly fine. Isn't he lovely in his little world? Just pressing along his little nose. Let's get some more zinc. The brush is experiencing growth. Internal growth. Look, pressing that in. Press, press, press. A little bit here and there, not a lot. More on the outside edges. There's some craziness around the horns. Oh, lovely little buffalo. Isn't he pretty? Look at him mm. coming in. Oh, yeah. He's just a coming in, isn't he? Yeah. Now let's take a little of my burnt umber and my Indian yellow and maybe a little of my This is going to be crazy. This is super risky what we're about to do, but let's go for it. Around the outside edges right here. Look at that. Do you see that? That's why I get the big bucks. We're used to anyways. <laughs> this, guys, is probably the closest into my personal art practice I've ever had you be. Mm. And John can tell you. <clears throat> You're just painting along today. I am. See how I'm just taking this, this golden, so I've taken the Indian yellow, I've taken the cad red, I've taken my burnt sienna, I've added the zinc, and now I'm creating these highlights in the fur in these pops of delicious color. Now, you, you, you're, you're working with this brush because you're liking the effect that you're getting with it. But yes. But you could do this with any brush. That, that, you had, that had a stiff bristle. Yeah. An old, old disastrous brush would be fantastic. A brush that you thought you were going to throw out, grab it out and say, you might be the secret fur brush I have been waiting for my whole life. Very could be. Very could be. Very could be. The ancient order of brushes. Known the ancient as... order of brushes. I'm going to take this color, just like right here at the top of the nose. All right. How you do? How you do? How you do? How you do? Get some zinc. Get some zinc on it. Just very loosely talk about this. Yeah, just, just having a little moment here. Just a little bit of that there. I see another little bit of that there. So I'll put some here. Little nose. Little nose. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's coming, just popping all right in there. Yes, isn't he? What's happening here? Well, he's got this little scruffy bit happening down here. But it's quite dark right here. And you know what you can do right there where it's quite dark? Mm. Oh, yeah. Ultramarine. Rinse out your brush, though. <laughs> You can just come back with that. See, I'm just tapping back with that. Right here, just coming right here. You just, you're freer than you know. I'm with zinc and my blue here. You're just freer than you know. 
And this little play of these cools and yellows and all of this, again, closer, this is the closest to my art practice you guys have been. How I paint. How yeah. I personally paint. Like, when I'm doing my thing. I'm having kind of a day, so y'all have been kidnapped. Because I need the art therapy today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this happens on this channel on occasion. You may find yourself kidnapped. And that's okay. This is, this is really enjoyable to see. I love how the, how, how much time you're spending. And I, and I keep saying fur because I don't know if... It's fur. Bison alone have fur or hair. hair. They, <laughs> they could be hairy and we don't know it. And we don't know it. But they, they look furry. And I don't know what, you know, that's... Right. That's biology and some stuff. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Gosh, that's that makes me so super duper happy in every way. Happy. Every, everyone is very happy to be on your... I just took your... my phthalo blue and a little of my zinc white. Because thalo has this green shade to it, and ultramarine has this, and so it's much more yellow. Has this purple shade? It's going to create some cool stuff. So everyone is very happy to be on your art walkabout here. Yeah, I'm on an art walkabout, but this is how I paint when I'm painting for me. Like if I was painting something for sale, this would be a lot of how I do it. And tell you what, it would sell too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would buy this one. I like the buffalo. <laughs> yes, there'd be somebody who's like, "That's the first buffalo I've ever seen that made me feel like buffalo make me feel." Yes. And I'd be like, that's so good. And so you're using burnt sienna, is that right? Not burnt umber? I'm using burnt sienna, burnt umber, cad red light, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green, diox purple. What did you just put Indian out? Indian yellow. I just put out burnt sienna. Okay, you're putting out burnt sienna. And a little more, because, you know, it's getting all dry, isn't it? Mm. I bet you I need some more cad, too. Look at that. It's all sticking. Sticking. Everything's sticking because it's hot. We're almost there, though. It's going to be real pretty when it's done. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be so pretty when it's done. But let's have a little thought about these wonderful horns here, right? Mm -hmm. Let's have a little thought about these wonderful horns that we have up here. You know, that are coming up and out. So I've taken my, my umber... And my ultramarine blue. And I am defining these a little bit. These are a hard edge, aren't they? Yeah. And very important that his horns be a hard edge if he's so whimsical. I'm going to add a little of this zinc into my paint. Still wet, zigging back and forth lightly on the edge of my brush. Zigging back and forth lightly. Then come over here. Mm -hmm. Zigging back and forth lightly. Okay, I'm in love with him. Right now I'm feeling so much better. I'm sorry, babe. I know another time. This is wonderful. What they were, at, they were wondering, we should decorate his horns maybe with some Christmas lights <laughs> or, uh, or some wreaths or something. There's also a good suggestion that uh, the bison alone might breathe fire. He's good. He's perfect where he's <laughs> I at. I like where he's at. They were making, there's a really good, <laughs> really interesting, interesting no, suggestion. No, I, I, no, it's a natural thing. People are like, oh, wait, you painting? I got an idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you're painting. <laughs> <laughs> you could put a Death Star in the background. You could. You, put could. All, you could do all sorts of cool things like that. So he's just beautiful here, isn't he? He's just amazing. I'm going to get some of my... We're not done with these, but we're just starting to talk about them. They're an important part of the painting, so make sure that they're good. So my phthalo blue and phthalo green. Let's add it to the horn a bit. See that? Yeah. Thalo blue, thalo green. Wow. What a color surprise. So nice. So nice. Y'all may be in my jam. I now, think this just is so awesome. you know. 
Sometimes you get kidnapped into an artist jam. It's coming together, though. It is coming together. All right, so my purple and my cad. And I'm going to just try to sketch this in. See how we do. Oh, you're doing pretty good. Just got this little lippy lip here. And they think it definitely looks southwest. Yeah. Yeah, all the people from like Santa Fe and stuff are like, yes. What's interesting is even when Southwest Art went out of fashion, um, the price point didn't go down. The collectors didn't abandon it. A lot of times art works in fashion for about a minute. And then what will happen is that the collectors will vanish. Right? I'm going to get some Indian yellow on here. Well, I think one of the unique things about Southwest Art is that it's not only a regional art, but it's also a style. Yeah. And, and that, you know, so intrinsically there's a lot of people in the Southwest that like this artwork because it reflects where they live. So exactly. It's, you know. It's it's awesome sauce. So it's kind of awesome like that. I my brush. I'm getting some, some yeah. coloring here. While there are some folks in the uh, Great Plains of America who might allow for a bison to come stand in their living room, but a painting is far more enjoyable, generally speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm just trying to create some value blocks here as I'm working my nose out. Yep. I'm working my nose out. Do, 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 do I have a smaller, bright, in my natural bristles? No, nope, pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> You're the same size, you tricky little bit, you. So I've just got to keep playing, playing, playing with this as I'm coming down. Just keep playing with it. You got it in there now. Hmm? It's all just coming together in there. Yeah. Well, what you got to do is, up, oh, lost a little. So see how the dark went a little far afield for me? Oh, yeah. That threw off the painting there. It debalanced his nose. It debalanced his nose. So I've got to come back in with a little burnt umber and a little sienna and maybe a little ultramarine blue and be like, what can I do over here to balance the space back out? Because we have to start pulling this. I need a smaller brush that works for me in this space. <sighs> All right. Maybe... I'm going to have to get into my details. Get your details. Yep. Just going to have to because there's just some stuff that has to happen here. So I'm going to take my purple and my uh, uh, thalo and maybe even a little cat red. I'm going to make a very dark value set. Right? <gasps> so you, you've got some cat tongue converts out here who are like, we should use a cat tongue's brush. <laughs> 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 I probably will at some point here. But I need to make this dark shadow, the shape of this dark shadow, and the fact that there is this space under the lip is super important. Under the lip, I've got to catch it. If I don't catch this in the eye, then all this work is for nothing. I'm going to press up a little bit and down. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pay attention to what's happening right here. I say that a lot, which is like pay attention, but sometimes we're so stressed in the process of our art, right, that we can't, you know, see what we're doing, where we're going. And so you have to sort of slow down and zoom in on where your focus is mm -hmm. maybe at. You know, think about how this fur is maybe curling here. And then even as I'm looking here, I'm like seeing some value sets I've got to, to deal with where I've got maybe a little bit coming around the outside of the nose. So I'm just trying to capture that as I'm capturing him. See how I'm capturing his shadow? 
capturing a shadow is a big deal. Can't do nothing about him if we don't capture his shadow. Bonk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what happened? I bonked my elbow. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes my mic is on and I... So I'm pulling his little chin there. I'm going to wipe this off just a smidge. I'm going to load it with the smallest amount of titanium white. I'm going to come here and just... right there. Just dusting here. Too much. Too much. So I wipe off and I blend back. I'm going to dust some of this right here. See that? How those yeah. play against each other? Back into maybe this number two bristle on. Let's see how we're doing. It's so, it's, I mean, like, when, like, I just pulled back on it. And, like, wow, that looks really she, good. Oh, starting to look good. Oh, yeah. Really does. Starting to be enjoyable. Starting to, you know, be the... The cute little guy that he is. There we go. So see, there's oh, this yeah. weird point where the nose finds itself. Right? Now, I'm going to wipe off, and I'm going to get just my ultramarine. I'm going to see if this is enough. May not be. Okay, zinc. Ah, oh, it's gonna be hard work. <laughs> Pulling this out right here. More zinc. Back of this nostril mm -hmm. needs to have a little highlight space, and not in some small way. Not in some small way. So now we have the fun of getting in the eyes. Because as cute as he is, I actually want to push this back too. Oh, yeah. So he's just not quite there yet. I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm going to get some of my ultramarine blue. And I'm going to glaze the nose back. Look. Now I'm going to get my zinc. There we go. There he is. How are you? I was oh, worried yeah. I would meet you. That's a very nice nose. It's a very nice nose. Titanium white. Dashing on the corner of my brush. Along the highlight set of his nose. Mm -hmm. Just because we're being fanciful doesn't mean we can ignore who he is. Detail brushes now. Detail brushes now and mist. It's a misting in there. Misting in there. This is looking really cool. He is, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So now I'm getting a little of my Doc's purple and my Cad red and my Thalo blue. I'm making my deep, deep color, my darkest color. I might even, in this, get my green involved. I'll mist so I can get some fluid paint off my brush. Okay. So this side here. I'm going to sketch in what I feel like is my eye shape. Pretty easy to work it. First the zinc, because the top of this, below your darkest line has a reflection. 
See that? Oh, yeah, just barely. Barely, barely, Actually, but it's... You, you give me two seconds. If you give me a sippy sippy, I'm going to make a quick adjustment on that camera so I can... Pr because I had to adjust it up because things were so dark. light light earlier. And now that they're so dark, I want to adjust it back down so that I can see a little better. See it now? No, you have to hold on just a second. Look at that here. eye. Yo, you can see it, but hold on just a second. Let me... I want to adjust. Make one adjustment here. So hold on a second. Buffalo eye. <laughs> Buffalo, I want you come out tonight. Come out tonight. We've got to move some fur closer to his eyes once we get them placed in. But he's sort of awesome. His buffalo eye. And we haven't even done the cool flowers up front on this pretty boy. This pretty boy Floyd. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Okay. So, so I'm going to come over here, paying attention to this eye and its placement. Tighten it up just a little bit there. Right. I'm going to try to remember that these two have to be on the same socket. Right? They have to be on the same socket, so I'm going to do my best. I'm going to get my zinc. I'm going to pay attention to my reflection, which is at the outer edge here. Comes in. And there's a little underneath. I'm going to go get some more zinc. Sort of loaded like a bead on here. I'm going to tap out an even higher value highlight. Right there. Rinsing this off, getting a small bright that I've got some control over. There's a couple places I have some dark stuff I've got going on. I've got to come in here with my blue behind this and press this out. Now I've got to start helping fill in the fur of my face. And anyways, as soon as I'm through with that, then I will have buffaloed my last buffalo. Wow. Bison alow. Bison alow. He needs a little ear. Little ear twitch. Well, he's twitch. got this ear out of this one. Well, the other ones are just kind of lean back, hiding in there. It is. Well, they're, the head's not in the same. But it's there. It's just hidden. Mm. So we should talk about it. We should just recognize that it's hidden. Right? Sometimes things are hidden. Under his eye. A little bit here too. And then over the eye right here. Mm -hmm. Put some of this right here. Pulling this down. It's so enjoyable as a color. Feeling it. Let me see. Can I back up and back see up. how? Up. Oh, loving him. Yes. I'm loving him. All right. Would you like some flowers? I'd Just like a some flowers. Bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> what? Just a little bit of flowers in the front. You just want a little, you don't want all the flowers? Well, of course I want all of them, but they're little flowers. <laughs> so, that, you know, I don't want like a rose garden. It is an excellent time. To rinse your brush out and rinse, get clean, rinse, rinse. clean, 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 clean stuff. So let's talk about what's happening over here. So we've got some of this phthalo green. Do you need clean water there? I gave, yeah, I have it. Okay, you got it. Okay. So I'm just mixing some of my burnt into that. Burnt umber. Do, 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 um. do. And I'm going to start defining some of the space with this more vibrant color. Mm. Just start to. I know I've got so many flowers happening here. I can even start to stroke the direction I'm going to be going. Making sure my canvas is sort of well 
thought out. Now, I've got this color here. Take a little Indian yellow into it and some our favorite zinc white. And then we're going to just start scratching in and talking about structure of the stuff. Now it's got a little more zincs. Some direction happening here. Very lightly on the on my brush. Very lightly through here. Wipe off, grab a little of your titanium white because that's a whole different aspect. And add some highlights in your bush. Right, like I know I've got a little bit that'll be like that, and then I've got another little cluster that's happening here. And I don't want to remove my low lights at all. Mm -hmm. Now with my brush still green, let's come over into our yellow. Right? Mm -hmm. See, so I'm getting the yellow. Start talking about the yellow flowers in this bush. By using the muted yellow, by letting the yellow be muted by the green, you're putting some of these flowers in shadow, which will allow you to bring some more focal into your space. You can even add a little zinc white to it. Just a little bit. Building, building, building the layers of these flowers. So here, let's just top down. And I see another little crest of them tapping down. Maybe we'll tap down here. We're just going to tap down where we know we have these we're little bits. Wipe off your brush, but don't rinse. Get some more of your Indian yellow on there and get a good chunk of your zinc white. And let's start doing these little flower strokes. Just tapping these little guys in. Still zinc. We're really almost through, guys. I know. It's looking really good, though. And I can't believe it. We, we've had a huge crew. We've had almost 300 people stay with us this entire time. That's extraordinary. This is really extraordinary. There's a lot of people who wanted to learn to paint this. You know, people have coming and going. But really, we've had a really solid, solid crew of folks here just hanging out with us. And it's been pretty fantastic. Well, we know there's a lot happening in the world right now. And... There's what we, you know, a lot of us have people, loved ones, mm -hmm. taking this yellow up out of the green. Who, you know, we're worried about. Yeah. Let's get right into our zinc white with this color. I heard from our own Joey Raven. Oh, yay. He, uh, he has no power or water, but he's safe and dry. So, uh, or. Subjectively safe. Subjectively safe and dry. So I think that he's like a lot of people, they're, they're, they're hanging on out there. So. Isn't this very nice? This is turning out so nice with all the little flowers. So this is, this is, you know, you guys ask me a lot, how do you paint? You're there with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's really make a gray green. So let's get a little of our phthalo green and a little of our uh, yellow ochre. And I'm even going to grab, if I have any of my, any left, my... There we go, pulling it out. Cad red. Mm -hmm. Because the opposite of green is cad uh, red. I'm okay. going to keep working in my yellow. See what I'm doing? Yep. Working it in, yellowing it up. And this first range of color, let's start coming in here and paying attention to the, the way the 
these plants are. Right? Mm -hmm. Paying attention to the way that they are, we're going to put this first layer in. The flower layers. The flower layers. The flower layers are just as important as all the other layers. Mm -hmm. They're just in the very front. They're so you just have to in do the very last. front, and so they have to be finished here. I'm going to need a dark green right there, so I can really easily get that by ultramarine blue in my thalo green and get some burnt sienna into it. See how that's very dark? Mm -hmm. Right along here, look. What do oh, I have here? Yeah. Some very dark green because I expanded my landscape. I have to bring that back. Otherwise, all the rest of it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I'm going to take that across here, glaze this up. See how I'm just being very random back and forth? Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. That, that motion happens with me a lot, this back and forth. And you'll see a lot of artists do this. We all get in this little habit. Yeah. And sometimes there's the artists that go, dip. <laughs> That's a group two. This process will prevent you from over blending and overworking what you've got. I like this guy. He's very He's an cool. interesting fellow. I will definitely give him that. So I'm going to get my zinc white back into this. Much more zinc white. And I'm going to just see I'm stroking back and forth kind of start to talk about the plant here not all of it because what I've got to do is I've got to come in and I'm going to focus on some key factors in a minute but by by doing this I'm going to be really filling it in and giving myself some some space to work from You can see how everything is sort of showing through underneath. Painting softly. Now Holly was saying that, uh, oh, so Lily was saying that uh, the buffalo looks very fierce. It's a fierce very buffalo. Very fierce with the color there. That, you know, He's very alive. Yes. And, uh, I'm going to pull some of this green up into him. Holly's little brush, Bryson, really loves it too. It's very you like happy. your buffalo, Bryson? Yes. Just thinking about this, and I'm, you know, adding this. And you can see as I layer, it creates some depth. Or bisinolo. Until we know what it, what you're going to call it. Bisinolo. You're going to have to. You're going to have to make a determination here at some point. Cad yellow, yellow ochre. He's adorably fierce. He's adorably fierce? Yes, like cuddleable, like, you know, fiercely cuddleable. Like if you saw him standing out in the field, you would just be like forced to run up and hug him. Like fiercely <laughs> huggable. Fiercely huggable. Just that's, yeah, I think that encapsulates it. Let's put some soft yellow dashed into this bush. So that's the cad yellow and the yellow ochre, right? We're creating some soft yellow, aren't we? Mm -hmm. they, these are the colors deep in our structure here, right? Mm -hmm. There's blooms that are low. There's blooms that are high. I want to do his face a little bit because I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> you should be looking at your piece non-stop asking yourself where is there more where should there be more right mm -hmm. you should be just i just went up there with some yellow i'm gonna come back and okay. give myself some soft yellow deep this is and i'm using the zinc to build this up right maybe we'll pull scrub see i'm scruffing some of this out Scruff it out. Scruff it out. Scruff it out. <laughs> Let's come in here and 
So a lot of people would feel really good right here. They'd be like, I got my forward flower. I got some back flower. But no, we're not there. We're not there? No. No? no. What else can we do? Let's get our cat's tongue out for a second. Cat's see tongue? if it'll give me the line I need. And if what it will, doing? we're going to go with it. So I'm going to get back into my sage green. I'm going to add a little yellow to it. And maybe a little cad to age it out. But this time, where are you going? Titanium white. And let's see how this is. <sighs> oh, oh, look at those. You're making little, little planty plants. So these little guys have these little sort of dashy little stems. Don't they? Yes. Dashy little stems. I almost said crushy. Because <laughs> apparently that's now part of my life. Just dashy little stems in this soft sage. So now, what is this compared to everything else? It's a hard edge, isn't it? It's very crisp. It is a crisp edge. Very focused. It is a focused edge. So that can say that something's very close to you. It's very sh crisp. That's right. So I'm just dashing my little brush stroke along on the edge of this brush. Yes, this is kind of unfair for the brush being so awesome. <laughs> some of it can be darker. Some of it can be lighter. Now, <laughs> hmm. Bryson wants to know, that's not a real cat's tongue. That's just what they call it. No, no kitties were harmed in the making of any Serpa brushes. No. None. We love all the kitties. Now, it's funny as a filbert and a cat's tongue are two different brushes. In this particular case, it is because this brush comes to a point instead of just a round. I could have to do a video about it. Yeah. And that has, that has five working surfaces versus like three yeah. or four on a filbert. I mean, now, to me, a brush always has more working surfaces than the manufacturer says. I'm like, really? Are you sure? Because I use all, I, I use my brushes then. But I mean, you know, from your traditional art kind of yeah. brush stroke philosophy kind of. You can always come in and you can add a little brown and you can add a little rust and you can add a little saying you can keep pressing it in. And, and you can find out information about these or any of our other stuff on the well, links are in the description down below. So. So just this is so fun for me. Just be in this space in a moment. You know? Be in this space in a moment. Offload, reload, paint your hard edges. Just dashing. Not dissimilar, guys, to the brush stroke on the arrow yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's the hard edge, though, that makes it feel focused. You can come in with some little strokes. They're hard strokes, though. They're highlights. They're and then at the edges here, you just come and tap the little shape of the the plant. See how you do? Mm-hmm. So nice. Are y'all kind of tripped out? This is amazing. Let's see it backed up. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we're starting to get there. Yeah. He feels buffaloy. He, he's he's very very buffaloy. Like I said, all the painting skills, none of the spelling. <laughs> None of the spelling, man. I'm just where I know I want this hard edge. I'm coming in and talking about these hard edges, right? Yeah. The titanium white being used so infrequently in the piece gives this also gives me a whole bunch of power about how this is. Now, what is it uh, that your friend says about this? It's a... Uh Practice, not magic. Yes, Zoe Hung. Practice, yeah. not magic. That's all. I love how she says that. Yeah. You're so magical. No, practice, not magic. <laughs> it's made. <laughs> it's not made of magic. It's made of practice. <laughs> That's right. She's like, don't wait for some magic fairy to help you with your art. You'll be sitting there a really long time. <laughs> Just 
still trying to create elements of energetic. See how the brush strokes are energetic? Mm -hmm. By being like this, this creates energy in the painting. It's a really cool thing to be able to do. It really is. Come into your CAD yellow. Mix it right here. Get a bunch of your CAD white. Let's. Add some yellow to our world. Got some yellow in my world. Just You're yellow. just layering on just brighter and brighter yep. yellow there. Wow. Just some yellow. Where do I feel it? Where is it? Good. See how suddenly this bush. It's Talking. a more interesting bush than all the other bushes. It did. It came as far as shrubbery go. It came together. As far as a weird little yellow bush. Yeah, with some flowery bits on it. Right. And it, even it looks like that. It looks like the that that is that sage. I don't know what this is. <laughs> that like. It is not a sage. It's not a sage. No. But, oh, maybe it is. Maybe it's a type of sage. I. We My sage flowered purple and white and made everybody just think that they were going to die from an allergy. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the indigenous flora of that area. More white. I'm just going to add on a little bit, little bits of layers of yellow just to make those. Just make this pop, man. Dimensional. Well, they're really excited about this. This is nice. There are people already Sherpa dancing in ex in celebration of this one. Really? Being done. Oh yeah, they think this is great. Patricia says this screams Southwest. Oh, thank you. She's like, oh yeah, it's definitely there. I. I think it's. I think this turned out really, really nice. Like I know I keep saying that, but I'm looking forward to, to taking some pictures of this one. The difference about like if I were painting this for a show to get ready, mm -hmm. I'd just probably spend less time with it. I mean, more time with it. More time. I <laughs> wouldn't. I wouldn't be like doing it in a sitting. I would be like, and I would be walking back and having a look, and it would be even more colorful. Taking some time. Yeah, he on. would be just like when you really nailed it, is you can't tell it's made of color. And then you get up on it and you're like, that thing has a thousand colors. It is not brown. How for buffalo not brown? What happened, buffalo? It got sherpa said, I don't know, man. She painted me this way. That's right. It got sherpa -fied. When you get sherpa -fied, It's now a sherpa -lo. Just adding some different. All right, I'm feeling pretty good. This is pretty good. Going to add some of this here. I'll zoom out here on it. All right. Wow. I feel like that turned out really. If really you had cool. flown to a workshop and I was going to talk to you about how to paint in a more impressionistic style for the Southwest Art Movement while maintaining focal barriers, I feel like you would have gotten your money's worth, and it was I, free on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so I, for sure, that is. I feel like you've got your money's. Let's sign it in bubbles. Yeah, absolutely. Get some bubbles in there. So I'm going to really think about how I'm signing this because I want I have it has to be part of the composition. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to sign it, but I'm not going to do it in such a way as that it pulls all of that work I just did out of it. Right. Yeah. That would be pointless. Keep going, with bubbles. I'm. Bubbles oh, yeah. all the way out. Bubbles all the way down. <laughs> it's nothing but bubbles. Well, see, one of the things is we, we, we not only have a bubble machine, we have like a bubble blaster. There we go. So it's so. not an obnoxious signature. Look at that. Thank you, guys. This is pretty amazing. I, I, Tomorrow's an easy day. We had a lot of people hang with us today. This has been a big day. I feel like we're in a cycle class, and I'm like, tomorrow's an easy day, guys. We did hills to, like, I go to a cycle class. <laughs> But in my past, I went to cycle class, and that's what they said. You still, yeah, we. Yeah, this has been. This has I'm been really, really happy with great. him. Great. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna like photograph him and send him to my mother and be like, ha, ha, ha. 
mom, check it out, buffalo, all colorful. And she'll be like, that's so cool. It did turn out really good. I can't wait to see your buffalo, though. Yeah. I hope some of you guys, like, went for it. I know this is a more arty, looser, crazy thing, but I hope some of you went for it, and I hope for some of you it just exploded your brain in the possibilities that art can have for you. Yes. Because they're literally limitless. Buffalo don't need to be brown. Buffalo no. can be purple. They can be multicolored. And still feel brown. Is it weird how he still feels brown? He does. <laughs> how weird is that? Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And come back and paint Ma the moon maiden with me tomorrow. Yes. It's maiden in the moonlight. She's gorgeous. She's going to be easy. It's a one hoot swear. I promise. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and we'll see you with these really soon. Bye-bye.